call the meeting to order. And roll call, please. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, Pledge of Allegiance, of course. <laughs> With feeling. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hall? Here. Commissioner Morris? Here. Commissioner Glass? Here. Acting Chairman Hewart? Here. Commissioner Putnam? Here. Commissioner Patterson? Here. And Commissioner Phillips? Here. Today we have Chairman Montano absent. Okay. Anybody? Chairman? Do you, or could we have a moment of silence? Yeah, would somebody like to say, well, once more, would you like to say it? Please? No, you go ahead. No. I said it yesterday. Please do it again. <laughs> um, I would like to have a moment of silence for Pam Albers. for the consent calendar. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar? I am I motion to approve. I'll, I'll second it. Whoever. Okay. Any comments? All for a vote? Wait. Wait. Comments? Yes, I do have a comment. I um so Th this is about the resolution that's in the packet, correct? Correct. That should reflect the minutes or what we discussed. Well, the one thing that's not in it that I'm uncomfortable with is the employees. There is no addressing. I thought there was, I mean, in my recollection, there was a huge discussion about there was no more than 15 employees, and there is nothing in there about saying down the road we'll have a time or we'll say... Uh, this by this time there'll be an inspection to make sure I thought there had that was part of the conditions so that was I don't see okay. that how about if we pull it off and discuss it at, or well, ask staff to take a look at the yeah. minutes and reflect that concern and then we'll bring it up at the next meeting and we'll talk to Amanda this I thought um, at that at that council meeting that the planning director had addressed the when they uh, had their plans approved and all their conditions at that time, there was a certain number of employees, and then they would be doing an audit at a certain time. Now, I could be mixing up projects, but I thought that was stated by Amanda because I was sitting in the audience. But the audit should be as a condition. But okay. it's not in the minutes, okay. apparently. It, it isn't. It was so, on the. Can we. In, we can hold it over and it'll come down to the next. We have to hold it over. Can we say, could you please add that? Absolutely. And then we'll approve it with that addition. If that's yes. okay to this. It's this thing that I'm concerned right. about. Right. And I may be doing everything. And was I it noted in the actions, here. Paula? Well, this here. Okay. I mean, that statement is there. It is, but it isn't on there. Number 11. So in the actions, which was item 10, yep. number three with the condition was the city of Avalon will perform yearly audits to confirm applicant yeah. is yeah, complying right. with the proposed it's there. It's on there. 11. Okay. It's, but I thought we were going to put a time frame on it. No, they, 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 I, is, that, is that better to be open? No, I went back and looked and they say the Harbor Department defer, um, defines prime time as, you know, July and August. And so we were, quote, going to use that time frame. To, to look at it after the season. That was in the, the, the one from last month when we looked at it last month. 
it was in there about how do you define um, can we, we? I thought that's what we talked about was during July and August yeah, that but, we would do an we audit of employees. Yes, you're no? going to do it after July and August to see, see what, what happened have. during June, July and August. See what kind of business they've had if they've had to bring in more people. Right. Okay, so it's going in and looking at their books who got paid or something. Yeah, is after, that how they yeah. do the audit? Yeah, yeah. To see who is on there. How many employees hmm. they have. Hmm. That's like we've done for some other businesses. I see, I see. But that's going to get dicey. That's going to be the, super the, dicey the, be, get, because of the liaison. I mean, well, I just have concerns about they're it. They're going to say right. that, and that may always that be the case. they're not the conservancy, that they are toy on grill employees, not the conservancy employees. I, and that wasn't specified. Well, in, but, it, but it was, I mean, it, it talk, they, when they made the proposal I mean, and yeah, it was in there, it yeah. said it talked about retail. Yeah. It talked about, I don't know, but retail yeah. would say the store. Retail was a couple people, and then they had uh, one right, manager, two. one janitor, three three people in the kitchen. One bartender. Two, one bartender. Two people two on the people line. The one and do the dishwasher. Yeah, I, that was in there. So, so I, but the point is, who's when we do an audit? Who are we automate in the conservancy yeah. or the toy on grill? And they're they're shuffling their uh, people I'm, back and forth already. Apparently, they <laughs> apparently are because of what the resolution is for, strictly for the restaurant, bar, cafe, yeah. in whatever they you the plans that you approved and the number yeah. of staffing that it was broken down. They would yeah. need X amount for yeah. the retail store and yeah. their tours and things, and the rest would be for the restaurant. Right. And that's what we would be. Yeah. But I think that there's a, there's going to be a loophole there that they're going to say, well, they're not conservancy employees. So how, would you like to specify something specifically we could add it to the resolution? I think it should be yeah. all employees because what they presented to us was all employees. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, right. here it is. You know, they have guest services, Jeep drivers. Where, you look, where are you looking at, Paul? This was last month's. Um, that was what they presented That's what they month. gave us last month. And, okay. and I just could not believe that they were thinking that that, that would be able to service this operation. Those so I would feel more comfortable then pulling this resolution so um, um, Amanda can. I don't know if we need to because I think what we're talking about is administratively how it, the audit will be done, not whether or not the audit will be done. I guess my concern isn't the details of the audit because that's going to be kind of the best audit practices of how we do these with this and other projects. Mm -hmm. So we, to me the question is, is the condition adequate? And if it is, we don't need to worry about as much the administrative because Amanda's going to do it. I mean, it, to me, that's a separate issue. If we are talking about audits in general, we can talk to her about that and clarify what audits no, would be. But, I, but if you don't feel comfortable with what I, the what condition. I'm, what I'm worried about is that it's addressing, it, it doesn't delineate between the trailhead and the Toyon Grill, which are two right, separate and I don't entities. Think that, no, you but don't I don't think, think it matters. No, because the C, the conditional permit is for the entire project, and how it's audited really is something that Amanda does with this and all other projects on this. So, I mean, that's what I would say. So I'm still thinking the motion holds, and if people are comfortable with allowing Amanda to do that. Mm -hmm. No, but the way the, she normally the thing does. Is, what you're saying makes sense, logical sense. But who's paying the paychecks? Yes, but the whole project can only have a certain amount of staffing. The people, in, the people right. downstairs in the gift shop are presumably paid by the the, the Jeep drive. I don't think Amanda cares who's paying for what. It's yes. the total amount. And how do you well, audit that? Okay, then if we say to but the that's something we'll have to ask her. But, but what I'm saying is that's out. All we can do is put the condition on it that it be done and that they measure the amount of employees mm -hmm. at peak season but, and see, that they the, require half the housing. If we get into too much of the detail. No, but the problem is it's who are they? Because you don't have, yeah. if you look at some other place, it's something and it's one entity and one business and you got to audit how many employees or whatever. This one, if you say to the conservancy, you've got to, they're going to say, no, they're not our employees. Those are Toya and Grills employees. See what I mean? We're dealing with. No, I understand what you're saying, but and I don't think it matters. 
I, really? Well, sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, but so I'm you, uncomfortable with that. I mean, I would rather have it pulled, and I'd like to have a yeah. discussion with yeah. Amanda about yeah. it, is how that does work out, because I don't want to come back. I don't want to walk in there in July and see 10,000 people working, which I, you know, I just don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not being, but I do think that there is some, you know, right. just temporary moving back and forth, and I'm not comfortable with it. And I think it needs to be a little better defined about who is responsible and how that audit will happen. And yes, you're right, Amanda, that's her job. But I think it would be, you know, just to maybe she'll say to us, Polly, you don't have to worry about that because this or that. Or she may say, gotcha. I don't know. Any other comments? Yeah, I like the more specific language, actually. In this case, especially. Yeah. Okay, so we'll pull this one together and bring it back up. Perfect. I would, I would appreciate that. I would like that. Okay. So we'll, we'll modify the motion for the people who made it. We'll yes. withdraw it. Withdraw, withdraw the motion and, okay. and then motion to hold over. Hold okay. over. How about the, yeah, we'll just hold them back, both back. And then we'll get a clarification on Amanda, what the audit is, mm -hmm. and then what we approved, and how those things go together. And then if we need to talk more about what an audit is, we can do that in the future. Okay. So our motion is to pull it. Just pull it, and we're Perfect. not approving it. Okay, great. That's good. <clears throat> so we still have a motion to approve consent calendar item one. And we can't do that. I think that's I think the minute. It might be tied with it. Tied with it? Yes. It would just be a, the minutes for the last one. Yeah. And we can approve that. We'll just yeah, do that at the next minutes. meeting, too. Yeah, and that's what actually I mm -hmm. thought that was what Because what do you want the minutes to say? Because the minutes yeah. might have to be adjusted based on what we said that reflects wow. how the audit would be done, if they said anything about how the audit would be done, so. is my interpretation of okay. what this went up. Okay. So having done nothing on that item, let's <laughs> move to action. <laughs> and we'll start item okay. number. Okay. First item on the public three. hearing. And I'll still stay because I live close by. Okay. And thank you for attending. Thank you. Uh, Bart, I have one question about sure. this item before you go. Why you was the sign me. forgotten? I have no idea. Because it was. I, I have nothing to do with it, so I have no idea. I thought you were the no, management. No, he just put our name down. He hasn't been in to see me to sign a contract to meet me or anything. My wife had talked to him on the phone. And he put our name down on the application. So, um, I don't know why the sign's not been put up, but I know he's been spoken to today, and that a sign will go up, and then it will come up on the next. Yeah, just curious. Okay. Could you give us the background on I certainly will. Please. This is a conditional use permit for a transient rental at 78 Gaviota at Hamilton Cove Condominiums. It's a request for approval of a conditional use permit and coastal development permit to allow the renting or leasing of room or rooms with or without table board in a dwelling unit for periods of fewer than 30 consecutive days duration. This is pursuant to the Avalon Municipal Code and the location again is at 78 Gaviota. The floor plan is there are two bedrooms and two baths. There is an attached um, floor plan for a year viewing. The property manager is Catalina Island Vacation Rentals. The proposed project is categorically exempt under Section 15305 of the state CEQA guidelines. Minor alterations in the land use limitations, which do not result in changes in land use or density. In December of 2016, the city received an opinion letter from the Coastal Commission noting their position that conversions to transient use constitutes a change in intensity in use and should be authorized pursuant to a coastal development permit. Based on the opinion, application for a transient rental use must include a coastal development permit. The project is in the coastal zone and is subject to a coastal development permit, which requires a public hearing and a planning commission approval. 
Specifically, the project requires a coastal development permit under section 9-8.102B2V of the Avalon Municipal Code, as the proposed is requesting to allow the renting or leasing of a room or rooms with or without table boards in a dwelling unit for periods of fewer than 30 consecutive days duration. And once again, that's at 78 Gaviota. Under Avalon Municipal Code 9-8.103H, the Planning Commission must determine whether the project is within the 300-foot appealable area boundary. Based on the appealable area map uh, excerpt included below, it is staff's recommendation that the Commission make the finding that the project is within 300-foot appealable zone. The requested conditional use permit does not involve any changes to the existing improvements on the subject property. The transient rental housing impact statement submitted by the applicant indicates that this property has been used as a vacation home by the owners and has not been rented for a period of more than 30 consecutive days to the same occupant at any time during the two years preceding the application. Um, as we stated earlier, the unit contains two bedrooms. The bedrooms are of adequate size to ac accommodate the two persons in each bedroom allowed by the standard conditions of approval that apply to all transient rentals. The standard conditions would in fact allow two additional persons for a total oc permitted occupancy of six persons. Staff does recommend the following that the Planning Commission find the project categorically exempt under Section 15305 of the State CEQA Guidelines, that the Planning Commission adopt Resolution Number 19-16, approving a conditional use permit for the operation of a transient rental at 78 Gaviota, subject to the attached conditions of approval, that the Planning Commission adopt the findings necessary to support approval of the Coastal Development Permit, including that the project is within the 300-foot appealable zone, and that the Commission include in the conditions of approval that upon sale of the property, the new owners shall be required to register their ownership with the Planning Department. Thank you. Mm -hmm. is there, before we open the public hearing, any questions for Ms. Ratty? So this unit does come with a golf cart? Oh, boy. Do you know that answer, Rocio? Yes. <clears throat> Most um, units in Hamilton Cove, they come with vehicles. And so when we go to count the CUPs, and we're, are we going to leave out Hamilton Cove in the count? Because they can always have one, right? But the, on a quality of life issue, when 140 golf carts are running around town on a Saturday, you know, that becomes an impact. I do know that uh, Rocio's been diligently working on a whole CUP master thing, so I'm going to let yes, her respond to that. that. Yeah, great. so um, being that um, Hamilton Cove is farther out from town, mo all of the CUPs from Hamilton Cove have been approved with vehicles. If you can choose, you decide if you want this property to include a vehicle or not. Oh. That is up to you. I, I just have, I mean, unfortunately we can't ask BART, but it would be really interesting to know. I can't, the one thing I would say about that, it would be difficult to rent at Hamilton Cove without transportation. I mean, in, in, a, in an ideal world, there'll be, there'd be a shuttle that ran back and forth from Hamilton Cove. But, um, we don't have that, and so realistically, um, the only thing I would I would hope I mean, what's the what's the rental rate there? I mean, on any given weekend, can we, we know might that? We not want to debate the merits yet. No, no, of course, but I just I think that what until after the public hearing. Is that okay? Got it. You go, Eric. Okay. <laughs> so it's just questions. Yeah, just questions, and it's a good question for the applicant to address, for sure, if they speak. And I do want to add that all CUPs that are approved, um, the owners are allowed to have a vehicle. It just does not come with a rental. So if the owners come over and they have a vehicle in the property, they are allowed to use the vehicle for themselves. But the um, guests are not allowed to use the vehicle. Just wanted to add that. Yeah. Any other questions before I open the hearing? Okay. Open the public hearing. Is, 
Anybody would wish to speak? Please name and address and Karina speak Cisneros, right into the microphone, please. General Manager Caldean Island Vacation Rentals. The homeowner was not able to attend the meeting. She lives in uh, the Bay Area, and uh, because of her job, she couldn't come. Um, we're looking at the projected numbers of about 80 to 120 uh, booked nights a year. The TOT tax just on the rent alone, it should be anywhere from ten to $12,000 that comes to the city. That doesn't include the add-on fees and the housekeeping, the possibility of the housekeepers actually creating possibly a new job for someone to clean it, considering the 80 to 120 booked nights. Um, as far as I know, all rentals in Hamilton Gove do include um, a golf carts. And um, it's um, overnight has to be parked in Hamilton Go. So that doesn't, in, um, doesn't add a lot of impact on parking. I understand the concerns, but it's usually the weekends, which are already hectic on this island, and most of the people are already in by 8 p.m. So There's a lot more than 80 weekends. Yeah, we, Wait, I'm not counting the summers, which usually are the way they are. And if we live in this town, we, I, I think we can all approve that they are pretty <clears throat> wild. I live on Lower Desconso, and on any day in July, I step up and throw up. So that's what I'm referring to. Okay, can you, can you address the part? I, mean, I guess you did. Mm -hmm. um. So they have off-street parking. They're not allowed to park in town anytime, you know, after 10 p.m. through 5 a.m., I believe. Those are the hours. And, um, yeah. I am so old that I remember the days when Hamilton Cove only had one golf cart for four units. And then Norm Stoll was a councilman at the time and changed that. So every unit got a golf cart. Does. So, uh, you know, there are other formulas in this that could be used. Uh, there's extreme liability in just having one golf cart that's being shared by four different um, homeowners. Um, in the event of someone having creating an accident, then I don't know which um, insurance would cover for different homeowners and 20 people driving at one weekend. So we're looking at the actual commercial insurance. Well, you're having complete strangers drive it for the weekend. Uh, they all have to be over 21, have a valid driver's license, and they have to pass a test so mm -hmm. that they can drive it. So we don't. And if uh, usually the HOA, the guard gate, um, it's very, very strict. Uh, the minute they see someone that may be underage or someone that may even have an open container of beer, they will call us immediately and we either take the golf cart key away or we just um, evacuate them, we evict them from the property. So uh, There's rarely any concerns with it, as far as I know. Any other questions for the... No. If you don't, don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, anybody else wish to speak? I'm going to close the public hearing. And any general observations before I ask someone to make a motion? Well, I wanted to ask, Rocio, could you repeat what you said about no, if the owner comes the same weekend as their place is being rented, then the people can't? I, I didn't understand what you were. So if a CUP is granted, the owner has a right to purchase a vehicle for the property, but just for themselves. However, they are not, um, this is for the flats, mostly for the flats. Um, but if um, when guests come over, they are not allowed to use the vehicle. So for for a, a, a vacation rental. Vacation rental. But that yes. does not apply to Hamilton Co. Or? It hasn't. That's, see, clear. I'm not, I'm, 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 when she said that, I thought, I don't get it. I mean, it, I thought, wait a minute, people that rent in Hamilton Cove aren't supposed to be using the cards? Is, no, that, guests at Hamilton Cove. I'm sorry? The guests at Hamilton Cove. Yes. Oh, wait, I'm so sorry. I, I said that. So what we have done in the past, Hamilton Cove, they do come with a vehicle. Owners and guests are allowed to use the vehicle. For Hamilton Cove only, yes. but in town, generally, that's not the case, or it's not supposed to be On the, the case. flats, like I had mentioned, the owner has a right to have a vehicle. Right. However, they are not allowed to have their guests use okay. the vehicles. Okay. Well, when you said that, I thought, well, apparently it doesn't apply to Hamilton Cove. That's what I was unclear of, but it, I didn't get the <laughs> delineation. So thanks. Golf cart. I'm sorry. Uh, when you say vehicle, you're saying you're referring to a golf. Cart. Yes, I'm referring to a golf cart. Okay. 
Anybody want to make a motion? I, I have one other question. Maybe this is for Corrine. Um, how, what do you um, guess will be the um, seasonal income of, of my? Um, we're expecting to see anywhere from forty-five to seventy-five thousand um, dollars. There are different factors that we take into consideration, such as the steps, uh, the um, the size of the units, and uh, running the comps. That's where we're hoping to be right at about fifty, fifty to sixty thousand, or so. Wow. And um, I think that removing, even having the discussion of removing the golf carts from Hamilton Cove, then we would have to look at the traffic that the um, actual taxis would add. And, you know, um, the. Unless they did have a shuttle service. Yeah. You know, that's a whole new many discussion. of these CUPs that we've approved at the top mm -hmm. of East Whitley give taxi tickets. So. Which is no bueno. I mean, I, they, I think that was addressed here recently, was it not? At a city council, I mean, they were talking about, no, but people weren't aware that that was going on and that uh, those are only supposed to be purchased by residents of Avalon and people are purchasing them and giving them to, not, they, I'm not they, talking yeah, about No, I know, but they are not selling the vouchers anymore, the taxi um, for people. We tried to buy them for our guests that had mobility issues and uh, they, um, they said they don't, they don't sure overdo it. Mm. Unless they change something with the uh, transportation tickets? services. The taxi, book a taxi tickets? No, not Sorry. at all. Okay, is anybody, thank you, would like to make a motion? A well, motion to approve. That's fine. Yeah. Second? I'll second it. Okay. And I'm assuming that meant with conditions one through four is rec recommending approval as staff recommended. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? I'm going to vote no just on virtue of an, one extra golf cart. It's a quality of life thing. Anybody else? You mean about. saying just no or I was making a comment? No, no. No, just I discussion. just, to me, this raises a larger question about the vehicle situation here, yeah. which is one of the things we're supposed to be looking at. And I, I do think that there, that it is something to be considered that we also, I don't, I don't, we can't take away the right that the people have to have the, the we can't redo what was done in the past, but we can look towards the future of doing it better. And, you know, I just think it, it might be, like it just might help diminish traffic in town if we did have a shuttle service that went all the way to ha Hamilton Cove. And I don't know if the city should provide that. I kind of don't think it should, but I, I think it could be something that could be thought of or discussed. That's all I'm saying. Right now, I'm gonna, I'm, I am going to vote to approve because it just, right, it doesn't, what's the point now? But I do think that it is part of our traffic and congestion and parking discussion that we we need to take up and that it that that should be a part of it a major part of it you know it, now Amanda was here when this was originally approved isn't she when oh, Hamilton yeah. was yeah. put in it'd be interesting to hear what the original what the original well, it wasn't supposed to have a gate what, what they did pardon me let me finish oh. it'd be interesting to hear kind of what the original debate was and why it evolved to the way it is now. I mean, it, if, if there was any there logic was a, to it or did it just sort of default into no, this? No, no, there was a lot of debate and they did traffic studies. They actually had somebody sit, you know, sort of like <clears> they're <throat> right at Metropole in Crescent and tally up who's going where, you know, if somebody went out. They did, they did a lot of traffic yeah. studies. It'd be interesting you, to hear yeah. how it evolved. But, but as but a separate why, issue, so, not for this but, but particular But it wasn't album. like it just happened. There right. were, and there was a lot of discussion about it for more than one year, mm -hmm. and a lot of traffic study. So, but as we sit here now, and like this, you can't tell those people they can't own a golf cart out there. So if we deny the whole permit, they still own the unit. So they can go buy a golf cart, or maybe they already have one. You know, it's, it's no, I don't, and I don't think there. You, you can't change that. That's but, what I mean. But, because but, it's, but you could think about something. Yeah, future. and if people want to go into town after yeah. ten, and they want to party down, mm -hmm. and there was a shuttle, and it would be the safer way to be yes. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
that um, it, there would be an alternative to driving a car into town because I, I do believe that, what did I hear, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m.? Those yeah, carts aren't supposed to be in town? It's from? 2 to 5. It's 2 a.m. to 5. You can't be parked on the street. Oh, I thought you said 10. <laughs> she did. I, but it's, you, if, their, if their rule is 10, in town, it's 2 to 5. 2 to 5 that people... 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. If you do not have a residence sticker... To park on the street all night. Oh, I got so, it. Okay, so... All right. Any other discussion on this motion? Call for vote. Please. Mm, Commissioner Hall? No. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Uh, Acting Chairman Hewart? Yes. Commissioner Putnam? Yes. Commissioner Patterson? Yes. And Commissioner Phillips? Yes. The next item for the public hearing is being held over. That is based on that the notice on the property was not uh, properly published correctly, so it, it's being held over. And the items that we had for discussion this evening on inclusionary housing ordinance revisions and the transient rentals in the city is being held over until your planning director can be back here. Hopefully she's on the men's. Next thing on the agenda is business from the audience. Anybody have something not on the agenda to say? Seeing none. I do. Commissioner of business. <laughs> what would you, you're not the audience. No. I'll stand like? there if you want me. Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner's business. Anything? Oh, I was just, I have already talked to Corrine about the sign, the awning that has been put up on the CBIR or CIBR, whatever, and I'm, the letters look like they're the size is correct, but there are two, there's like duplicate signs, which... There are two businesses where CIBR and CIRE, Calvina on Vacation Rentals and Calvina on Real Estate. Everything was passed through Amanda and approved by her. Did she see that sign? Uh, yes. yes, absolutely. Apparently. It's just odd to me to look at the awning with it, it's commercialized and doesn't really go with the neighborhood and they are and commercial. it looks like a double. It's we're on a commercial zone and we're three doors up from the lobby. I trap. understand I don't know that. how much more commercial that zone can get. I know. I'm just. I think zoning wise, it may be commercial all the way up the street. That's true. I'm thinking of aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we don't have but anything at base. But. I, I mean, I, I agree. I just think the co and I have nothing. I mean, there's nothing that can be done about it. I just think it's an odd aesthetic, but that's not our. Have you noticed it? Have you? Seen it? No. How could you not? Have I know. It's like I don't know. I I would prefer if there were just one, one well, if rental the, agency, the front the whatever. Building. Right. So considering again that there are two businesses inside. Um, I think sometimes a little bit more support and criticism would also be welcomed. But I understand your concerns, and uh, had it not been approved, uh, we would have done the adjustments as required for the city. We wouldn't like to be uh, right, against right. what's um, the limitation. And there are people not finding us. And considering we're looking into an empty, dirty lot, I don't think we're impacting anybody looking into an unpleasant um, sign. There's nothing across the street besides of a dirty lot, is what I'm saying, oh. from us. <laughs> Um, well, you can see it from a block away, you know, so it's working for that. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Okay. That's it. Adjourn. Good night, Tony. Good night, Tony. Good night, Tony. Well, you guys were very tame tonight compared to the last time.